देशको शैक्षिक वातावरण अध्ययन अध्यापन नीति निर्माण र शैक्षिक चेतना फैलाउने उद्देश्यले प्रसारित कार्यक्रम शैक्षिक छलफल Good afternoon dear ladies and gentlemen I am your host Robin Bosnet on the Radio Janus Sanchar 107.9 MHz This is a educational discussion program For more than 2 years this program has been airing every Sunday 3 pm to 4 pm In this program we are trying to analyze and dissect educational activities from very closely and in micro way In this today's program I am with Ms Rebecca Gandhi and uh, She is the student of the University of Auckland, New Zealand. Now she is in Bhaktapur at the college named Ibamura. And today I am with Miss Rebecca. Miss Rebecca, you are heartily welcome on this popular radio program named Educational Discussion. Thank you. Okay, Miss Rebecca, how are you in Nepal? Or I mean to say that why you are in Nepal? So, um, I'm a... I'm studying an MBBS mm-hmm. in New Zealand at the University of Auckland and I'm about to go into my third year and we get four months off, mm-hmm. four months vacation so I thought for one month I'll do something a little bit educational, I'll go to Nepal and I will observe in a hospital and just see what their medical system is like before I go back to uni. So I'm doing a medical internship here, mm-hmm. intern volunteer. There are many countries in our earth, many countries. but you have to in Nepal why um so i booked it through um an organization called cross continental solutions and the whole point of going overseas was to not i've been to hospitals outside of new zealand i've been to australia mm-hmm. um and it wasn't just to go and work in a hospital it was to see a hospital with different facilities compared mm-hmm. to new zealand and see how a hospital can function in a completely different situation such as nepal you know it's it's a developing country. country. Um so that's what I wanted to say. I wanted to observe practice in a third world country and I was told that the Nepali people are very friendly and mm. in order to be able to get things done and you know have the opportunities that I've been getting here, people need to be nice, people need to be open and trusting of you to be able to do things. So that was another reason I've heard that you guys are really really nice mm-hmm. and um that is true. I've been here for 3 weeks and that is very true. Um and the third reason was that I not only do I want to volunteer here and in turn but it's always just been something that I've somewhere that I've wanted to go mm-hmm. just to travel like do my own traveling explore a part of the world by myself so yeah Miss Rebecca you are the student of medical or medicine science what sorts of uh, works or activities you have to do nowadays at Iwamura At Iwamura I've been mainly observing so I will observe in the emergency room or in the outpatient departments and just basically watch the doctors consultations watch how they interact with patients I can help with minor procedures um or just or simply observe just kind of see like how they're getting stuff done and then take that knowledge back with me when I go back to New Zealand. So that's the main thing I've been doing here is observations and a little bit of assisting as well. And learning obviously. I'm learning a lot here. So how much days you have to spend over here? I spend 5 days a week. Um I'm here from 10 a.m. till 3 p.m. Yeah, 5 days a week. And they're very flexible though. It's really good. All together how many days you have to spend here all together? I'm here for 1 month. 1 month. It's been almost 3 weeks, so I've got one more week left after this. Mhm. And then I'm going back home. So 20 days in the hospital. What are the challenges over here being the student of abroad? Um there are a a few challenges. So the number one challenge for me has been the language barrier. Mm-hmm. Um where we when we when we're studying medicine, so all of our second year we did a lot of clinical skills and how to talk to patients and how to communicate and we learn as medical students that communication is key to building trust and it's key to developing a good relationship with your patient so that you can treat them in the way that they need to be treated. And when you don't know Nepali and they don't know English, mm. it's very very hard to build that trust and that's something that I've been like really really struggling with. That's the one thing that I've found lacking here is that I'm not able to interact with patients in the way that I would like to. I can't take their history properly. Um I can't make them feel comfortable just because I can't speak their language. Mm-hmm. Um I do speak a little bit of Hindi, so if the patient speaks Hindi, that's good. Like we can mm-hmm. kind of joke, but yeah, speaking Nepali is very hard and especially in the short space of 2 weeks. It's it's not something that you can, you know, 
It is very hard to know about the patients uh, because of language barrier. Yeah, and it's not just knowing about the patient, but it's it's more like when you talk to the patient, you make them feel comfortable. You make them feel like here is someone who understands what I'm going through. Um, here is a friend, someone that I can confide in in the hospital, and that's something that we get taught is very very valuable as a medical practitioner, as a student, as anyone. It doesn't matter what job you have. If someone can talk to you, the patient is going to feel so much more comfortable. Speaking to the patients, uh, we can use uh, two languages. One is uh, verbal language, and the next one is uh, non-verbal language. It means you are using only non-verbal language to observe mm. about our patients in Ibabura. I'm using a little bit of like so. If someone's getting their um. Oh, who was it? I was helping someone's um, skin staples being removed and I said like Dukcha and they laughed. So like little things like that, you know, it, it makes them smile. Just like little words. Mm -hmm. And that's sometimes enough. But um, mainly, yes, mainly it's nonverbal. Challenges of language. Yes. The other challenge has been, um, this is a problem, I wouldn't say problem, I'd say like issue worldwide. <laughs> where basically it, medicine or healthcare is a very male dominated profession mm -hmm. and I've noticed that even in New Zealand it's still like that but obviously um, as you know society is progressing it's becoming less and less visible there's more and more females in surgery and the the higher-end jobs um, here it still feels a little bit male dominated like I see a lot more males in the in the consultant jobs and a lot more females in the nursing jobs I haven't seen any um, any male nurses here like I've seen health assistants that are males but not nurses even though I've, I've kind of been informed that that's the same job so I do kind of feel that male dominance mm -hmm. um, that you know is, is, is slowly kind of being pushed away which is good mm -hmm. um, but it still is there and, and also another thing is that here I think patients doctors are still like put on a pedestal like doctors are still regarded as you know these amazing human beings that can fix anything and there's a huge power imbalance I think and that's something that um, as a student it's hard to wrap my head around that power imbalance where we're being taught at school now you and the patient are on the same level the patient is always right like you need to make sure that you put them first so to observe a bit of a power imbalance has been quite hard for me but you know I'm, I'm getting my head around it and Often, like, you kind of have to go with the culture if that's what the culture is, if that's how the patient um, is used to being treated, then that's what's going to work best for them. So it's it's a lot of, yeah, it's a lot of just respecting what is already there. Um, yeah. Miss Rebecca, while observing the patients, uh, don't you get any help from the your friend and doctor uh, in terms of uh, communicating the language to them? A little bit. My friends, like the students, I, like, when they're... When we go up to take a history, mm -hmm. they'll speak to the patient and if I have any questions, I'll ask the students mm -hmm. and then the students will translate it and then I'll get my information that way. So there are definitely ways, but it's definitely more impersonal, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can get help. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's always, there's always someone around. Always, mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. And the students, the nurse, most of the nurses and all of the doctors, they all know English, so that's really good. Miss Rebecca, the student of the University of Oklahoma, New Zealand, what are the strengths of Ibamura in your experience, your feelings? I, I think that the number one strength here is just basically like there's a very warm feeling, mm -hmm. I think, from not only to the patient but also between staff, mm -hmm. between students, like everyone respects each other and it makes it, in the eyes of a patient, I would I would feel a lot more welcome in the hospital where, you know, you, you forget that if you're injured or sick, the hospital can be a really scary place. Like, you know, you don't know whether you're going to feel okay, mm -hmm. um, whether you're going to come out okay. But when people are, um, are as warm and inviting as kind as the staff here are, it is much easier to feel comfortable. And I've, and I've observed it in practice, like everyone from the doctors to the health assistants, um, nurses, even students, everyone treats patients with a lot of respect which I really like I really really appreciate that and that makes it makes all the difference to the patient Miss Rebecca what should be the doctor while doing work while cooperating you are the student of medical and medicine what should be the doctor what should the doctor be like yeah, 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 what yeah. what should the doctor pay like the doctor should definitely try their best to reduce the power imbalance because as I said before there is a huge power imbalance between the doctor and the patient where there's kind of this um, 
assumption that the doctor knows everything and can fix everything and in reality it's not like that so I think it's important for the doctor to be humble mm -hmm. um, for the doctor to listen to the patient mm -hmm. um, because in the end the patient knows their body best mm -hmm. even though the doctor knows the anatomy and the physiology best the patient knows themselves best and so I think it's really important to have that communication and not be dismissive of the patient's concerns like mm -hmm. that's that's a big thing that we learn back in New Zealand is like you need to respect the patient's concerns it's so important to listen to them because often they'll know something that you don't and you need to get that out of them so that you can treat them the best you can mm -hmm. so yeah in short the doctor needs to be a good communicator and they need to be respectful they need to be human basically you know you're not don't regard yourself as I'm the doctor and I know everything just regard yourself as a human that has a little bit of knowledge mm -hmm. about the conditions that a patient might have. The doctors would be like that. Yeah, I think so. They they should not be afraid to be human because mm -hmm. a doctor is human, right? Mm -hmm. I I think that, you know, doc doctors aren't perfect. No profession is perfect. Everyone everyone makes mistakes and mm -hmm. if you if you're spending all your time trying to be this perfect human being, it's it's going to create a power imbalance because mm -hmm. you're not, you know, you're not you're not a god, you're not you know a king or a, anything like that you're you're someone who is trained to treat patients mm -hmm. and so yeah that's miss rebecca uh, you are here at ibamura hospital and uh, what about the feelings of the ibamura patients and what they are feeling their experience about uh, ibamura um i haven't i haven't seen enough to like follow through with one patient's whole story except for this one who he came in to the hospital he had been in a really bad accident and he was um, he was not in a good way like he was he was quite badly injured and then um, they, he went through his procedure and I saw him a few days later and he was like smiling he was so happy and he even he kept saying how happy he was he was like oh you know I'm, I'm so happy like he, we were talking about his x-rays and his what, what his surgery, what had been going on and he just kept talking about how happy he was and it was just, it was really nice to see someone so appreciative of what the doctors had done for them. So that was the one feedback I had, only one. <laughs> Miss Rebecca, what should be the behavior of patients, being patients in hospital? What kinds of behavior should behave in hospital, being a patient? You're asking me what, what a what a patient should do yeah, yeah, when yeah. they're in hospital. What patients should do and what patients should think in hospital while they are admitting into the hospital. Uh, I think that the biggest thing that a patient should know is that it's it's important to tell the doctors everything. It's important to um, not not leave out minor details that you think don't matter because often it's the minor details that matter the most. Um, and it's, it's just really important to be honest with the doctor because that's the only way that they'll be able to treat you mm -hmm. as best as they can mm -hmm. is if you tell them everything you can. So it's all about doctor-patient cooperation and a lot of communication. And as I said before, like this, this has been one of the biggest challenges for me because I can't communicate. And when you can't communicate, you realize like how important it is mm -hmm. for optimum treatment. So yeah, that's, I mean, a patient, you can't expect a patient to behave any certain way because a patient might be in pain, they might be, you know, really, really sick. And you can't expect a person to be on their best behavior when they're in such a bad state. But it's just really important, I think, for a patient to know that they need to tell the doctor everything. That's the most important thing. They need to tell everything. Yeah, to the yeah. Answer doctor. all the doctor's questions. Not not be embarrassed or afraid because again, you need to just be able to trust the doctor and know that they're only looking out for you. They're only looking out in your best interest. So that's the most important thing. Dear ladies and gentlemen, this is Radio Jana Sanchar 107.9 megahertz, and this is educational discussion program. In this educational discussion program, today I am with Rebecca Gandhi, and she is the student of the University of Auckland, New Zealand and now she is in Ibabura Hospital. At the moment we have short break, after break we will see you again.